How are the priests to be consecrated before God? This is the question that we seek to answer today as we continue our verse-by-verse -verse study of the book of Exodus on Walking Through the Bible. Of his word, the glory of his cross. If you have a Bible with you, you can turn to Exodus 29. We're going to be reading from verses 1 to 9. If you don't have a Bible, don't worry. Just follow along with us on the screen. The version that we'll be reading from is the New King James Version. So, Exodus 29, beginning at verse 1. And this is what you shall do to hallow them for ministering to me as priests. Take one young bull and two rams without blemish, and unleavened bread, unleavened cakes mixed with oil, and unleavened wafers anointed with oil. You shall make them of wheat flour. You shall put them in one basket and bring them in the basket with the bull and the two rams. And Aaron and his sons you shall bring to the door of the tabernacle of meeting, and you shall wash them with water. Then you shall take the garments, put the tunic on Aaron, and the robe of the ephod, the ephod, and the breastplate, and gird him with the intricately woven band of the ephod. You shall put the turban on his head, and put the holy crown on the turban. And you shall take the anointing oil, pour it on his head, and anoint him. Then you shall bring his sons, and put the tunics on them. And you shall gird them with sashes, Aaron and his sons, and put the hats on them. The priesthood shall be theirs for a perpetual statute. So you, will so you shall consecrate Aaron and his sons. In this chapter, we still have Moses on Mount Sinai receiving instructions from God as to how to build the sanctuary and how to set up the priesthood. In chapters 25 through 27, we have the building of the sanctuary. We add instructions on how to make the Ark of the Covenant and Mercy Seat, how to build the showbread table, how to build the golden lampstand and the altar of burnt offering, and where they would be placed in the sanctuary. We also had the instructions for how to build the tabernacle itself, including the holy place and the most holy place, as well as the court of the tabernacle. In chapter 28, we had the instructions for the priestly garments. There was a difference between the high priest garments and the common priest garments. However, both were special garments that would sanctify them from among the people. For the first 37 verses of chapter 29, we have the instructions of how Aaron and his sons will be consecrated as priests. It will take us six episodes to go through these instructions, so we invite you to watch each of these episodes. In today's reading, we find that one young bull and two rams without blemish were to be brought along with unleavened bread, unleavened cakes mixed with oil, and unleavened wafers anointed with oil. These items that were unleavened were to be made of wheat flour. The unleavened bread, cakes, and wafers were to be placed in one basket and brought along with the bull and rams. We're going to see what will happen to these things later on in this chapter, so we'll save our comments on them until then. Aaron and his sons were to be brought to the door of the tabernacle of Medan. In other words, this consecration was to be done in public, before the people and before God, for it is at the tabernacle of Medan where God met his people. Part of the ceremony was that Aaron and his sons would be washed with water. The water here symbolized cleansing, and so not only would the dirt of the flesh here be cleansed, but this would be a spiritual cleansing as well. Today, Christ demands that Christians be baptized in water for the remission of their sins. This washing in the New Testament is the point where our sins are forgiven by the blood of Christ and our spirits washed clean. Without proper baptism, our sins cannot be forgiven and we cannot be sanctified and holy before God. Similarly, without washing Aaron and his sons in water, they couldn't be sanctified and holy before God. After this washing, Aaron and the priests were to be dressed. The tunic was to be placed on Aaron, then the robe of, uh, of the ephod, then the ephod itself, followed by the breastplate of judgment. The ephod was then to be girded with the intricately woven band. Following this, the turban was to be placed on his head, followed by the crown, which would then be attached to the turban. Once Aaron was fully dressed, then he was to be anointed as high priest. The anointing would be done by taking oil and pouring it over his head. This anointing showed Israel that God had identified the person whom he regarded as high priest. No other person was thus to be recognized as high priest. After Aaron was anointed, Aaron's four sons, Nadab, Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar, were to be consecrated as priests. Their consecration was very similar to Aaron's in that they were dressed in their priestly attire, namely the woven tunics of fine linen thread. Now this passage, along with the actual consecration which takes place in Leviticus 8, doesn't mention that Aaron's sons were anointed with oil at this point of the ceremony. However, Exodus 28.41 does say that the sons were to be anointed, so in whatever manner they were anointed, 
such would be following the word of the Lord. Once fully clothed, Aaron and his sons were to be girded with their sashes, and Aaron's sons were to receive their hats. The priesthood that God was bestowing on the house of Aaron was thus to be this family's alone as long as the law of Moses stood. With that, our time is up today. Lord willing, we hope you'll join us for tomorrow's discussion of Exodus 29, verses 10 to 14, as we continue our walk through the Bible, one verse at a time. I'm not a Thank you for watching today's episode. We hope that you found it edifying and ask that you not only subscribe to our channel and podcast, but that you like and share this episode among your friends so that the saving gospel of Jesus Christ can go out to the whole world. Of his cross.